All right. Yeah, I can see it now. Okay, now can you see? Rob wants to know, can you see? What am I going to see? see? I can't see anything. Can you see the countdown? I haven't actually seen this show since it started. (laughs) Look at all those little bits. What? But Paul can't see the show screen. Yes, he can. He can. Okay, wait, look, check this out. What is the show? What, What episode is this? No, serious. Check this out. There's our guest. All right, guys. Turn it up loud. Turn it up loud. One more time. Welcome to our live stream, everybody. We're the Water Street Blues Band, and this is... Hi, everybody. Talking about live, coming at you every Wednesday at 9 p.m., including in Winnipeg and Montreal. Montreal. Why is that important? It's 3 a.m. in Winnipeg. Montreal, Winnipeg time? What time is it? Uh, it's, it's one hour earlier, so well, it's 8, it's 8, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. in Winnipeg right, right now. Right. It's 14 hey. nothing for the it's, for Montreal. It's 14 nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're uh, we're really thrilled you're here. I'm Rob, I'm the guitar player in the Water Street Blues Band. And to my left. And I'm Sylvia. I play keys and squeeze, that's accordion. And I'm Paul. And uh, just a second. What? I play the bass. I play the bass guitar. Yes. And I, I do. I, I tune John's guitars uh-huh. for the show, uh-huh. and I feed the rabbit. Yes. That's good. There you go. What a great show we've got lined up. You know, folks, we have got Mr. John McKinley on the show, a guitarist extraordinaire, um, winner of the Mel Brown Award. And also uh, j- uh, Jam Master. And uh, anyway, we're really pleased to have John. And he's on the show the second time. Um, we don't ask everybody back, just oh, John. Fluffy. Fluffy. So, John, <laughs> it's good. Uh, <laughs> also, we've got, uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, we've got uh, a great vintage vinyl tonight. Um, and we're going to be honoring actually three topics throughout the show tonight. Oh, no. uh, and they're, they're, they're in honor of John. Yes. Um, he's from Roswell, New Mexico, and I feel that uh, we really have to bring some uh, some kind of rocketry, some kind of uh, you know, kind of mystical sort of space, space stuff thing. into the show. That's one aspect of this show. The second aspect of this show is going to be Miles Davis, oh, and uh, which is a, a a love of and a passion of John's. And it was Miles. Also, it was, it was be- Miles Davis's birthday last week. That's right. Happy birthday, Miles Davis. And um, also Frank Zappa. We're going to be talking a little bit about Frank Zappa. So it's going to be Zappa Miles uh, UFOs tonight, guys. <laughs> That's all. And I would like to introduce to you Fluffy. Oh. Come on the show, Fluffy. Okay, okay. We have rekindled our relationship, oh. Fluffy and I. Give me a kiss, buddy. <laughs> Come down. Get down here, you bastard. No, don't. Don't speak. <laughs> don't speak. <laughs> Come on, Fluffy, give Paul a kiss. Get it over uh, with. Me. Okay, oh, that's better. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So, uh, so Paul, uh, um, yeah, yeah, we were, you know, you, you and I took a little trip. I guess we were, we were away on a, a little reconnaissance mission. Yeah, we well, occasionally Rob and I have to go to Breslau for band business, and uh, so we took a trip out to Breslau yesterday, and uh, yeah, I took a little trip as well. I, in honor, in honor of John. I set up this thing. Basically, we launched a rocket yesterday from Breslau down by the Grand River. 
And um, you know, we it was it was good. Yeah, you know, we, we had heard, we'd read somewhere, probably on the interweb, that the Pentagon actually verified the, that UFOs are real, and they have photographic evidence. But we don't, we don't, we believe, we believe none of it because we only want to search out the facts. So, Paul, uh-huh. Paul, the you, facts, just the facts. You, Faxes, just the faxes. You and I. Just the faxes. That's it. That's the yeah. that's your extent of your that's technology. Right. You, the fax machine. You and I decided we to better fax go. Fax yourselves. We had better fax we, yourself. We had better go out and and check this out ourselves. Investigate. Um, so Fluffy took some footage of this. Roll the tape. We had a hell of a day yesterday. Wow. Holy shit. I mean, sorry. Well. <laughs> I can't hear him. Can you hear? Oh my gosh. That was a pretty good ride, Paul. I can't believe it. I can tell you, Rob, I've got this back egg today. That was a rough ride. Um, but... Anyway, we made it back, and uh, we even went we went through the drive-thru at uh, Timmy's. We went in two different cars, though, just to be no, careful. No, no, we went through in the rocket. It was the fastest drive-thru visit in the world. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's kind of an indication of the kind of show we're going to have tonight, folks, so stick around. Uh, Montreal is winning, so there's no need to watch the game. <laughs> it's 3-1. Um, Rob uh, and we'll uh, against Winnipeg. So we've got a great show. What's next on the show? Let's all keep right, moving. All right. Well, you know what? We're going to do a community shout out this week. We just happen to have 2021 as the year of the health and care worker. And this is some great art for gratitude. Uh, Excelsior Elliott in Toronto created, created this great mural to say thank you to our health care workers over this past time, and we can say thank you by going for the pre-registration of your vaccine or showing up wherever it is you can show up now anywhere in Canada. <laughs> we say thank we'll you. We'll be making love again. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> by wearing a mask. Baby, be strong. Be strong. You can do it. Stay back, Paul. Stay away. Stay back. You know what? In all seriousness, it is the children that have been so brave, and they have been, you know, wearing masks and happily (laughs) washing their hands for 20 seconds. They've really been heroic, and we just wanted to show our gratitude to children as well. And coincidentally, there's a, there's a little song that uh, we happen to write. Oh, my gosh. Fluffy. No, I don't want to go. I don't want to go back up in the rocket again. No, no it's too soon. It's too soon. Okay, okay. It's too soon. That was close. Um, I want to say, <laughs> I, I want to say hi to a couple of people. My friend. I want to say, Paul. It's just until tomorrow. Paul. Paul. <laughs> I want to say hi to a few people who have joined the show. Um, Brett, hey, it's really good to see you. And yes, go Jets, go. Um, Angel, hey, how are you? Uh, Fred, Fred Smith, uh, one of our uh, more recent guests is on on the line. Thanks for for tuning in. BZ, all the way from Grand Bend, has uh, tuned in as well. Tom from Toronto. uh, Kathy from Winnipeg. Um, Greg? Uh, I'm not sure where Hi, Greg is from, and Diana is tuning in from Toronto. Greg, as well. you owe me money. <laughs> um, now, now we're going to give away a record. We uh, recorded a record in 2020. The Water Street Blues Band recorded an album called uh, "Talking About," and uh, we've created a question that is uh, especially relates to our guest today. Um, because uh, John loves this guitarist, but he also loves uh, Miles Davis. So, oh. which 
famous blues guitarist joined Miles Davis's band in the mid-1980s. So the first person who can answer this question correctly in the comments um, will send you out a, a digital version of our new record talking about. So I'll repeat the question. Which famous blues guitarist joined Miles Davis's band in the 1980s? 1980s. Hey, Scotty, glad you could join us. Thanks, for, thanks everybody, for tuning in. Makes us feel, warms our heart, our soul, you all and our money. livers. All right. Is it that magical time, Paul? I think it's that magical time to sure uh, delve into uh, Paul's deep uh, vintage vinyl crate. I'm a big uh, I'm a big Miles fan and a big Zappa fan, and I have a few things. And actually, Rob contributed a few things today, so we're going to do this uh, jointly. We have about 15 records oh, we're going to go through, so night. let's get going. All night. Okay, let's go. Miles and Zappa. <laughs> okay. um, it's amazing, you know. Really, these guys, these guys, you know, you know, you're famous when you're known by one name, right? You don't even need to say the second name. You just say the name Miles, and you know it's Miles Davis. You say Zappa, you know exactly who it's. And you can actually say Frank, and about 90% of the people say it's also Zappa. So, you know, that, that is quite the level of fame. Right. It's like Spock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Exact, it's exactly like Spock. It's not. Spock. Like it's not. You usually know okay. who it is when you say Spock. So yeah. this is this is a great record. This is um, uh, Miles when he played with his first great quintet that had uh, John Coltrane and uh, Philly Joe Jones, uh, Red Garland on piano and Paul Chambers on bass. And this this uh, this photograph was not was not staged. It was actually on stage at some small club, and they had a red fluorescent light on the entire band. And and whoever this photographer was just caught Miles as he was listening to the rest of the band. It's just a brilliant, brilliant record cover. It's called Round About Midnight, which was his, the tune that sort of propelled him to stardom. Sorcerer. Um, yeah, why don't you tell us about Sorcerer, Rob? Well, this is an amazing Well, Sorcerer amazing is, is, is uh, in the phase of Miles' second great quintet with uh, Wayne Shorter, uh, Herbie Hancock, uh, Ron Carter and uh, Tony Williams on drums. And this album uh, cover features a profile of Cecily Tyson, famous actress, amazing, amazing uh, activist, uh, uh, incredible human being. She just passed recently. Um, but when she was alive and, and going out with Miles Davis, um, she, she changed his ways a little bit, to, let me say that. He was, uh, he was, uh, uh, he maybe had a habit or two that wasn't particularly good for his lifestyle. Well, she basically kicked his ass and uh, had him eating right, exercising, and, and uh, he was in the pool, he was in the gym, he was in the boxing ring. He was, he was the best shape he was in his life when uh, he and Cecily were uh, hanging out and he was also making amazing music. This is an incredible record. Very cool. I don't know this album very well. Well, we'll listen to it tomorrow. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay. Um, bitches. Bitches brew. I did see her on the love boat, though. I remember that episode. Well, that counts. You actually guessed that during our rehearsals, and then you checked and found out it was right. Yes. 50% of the people I know have been on love boat. Well, and Gavin McLeod passed away this week. I think John so McKinley was I think, on Love and Boat And he passed away this episode. week as well. Yeah. So just the plane, the plane. <laughs> no, that's a totally different show. Is it? Okay, I, don't, yes. I never the saw love The Love Boat. The Love Boat is not Fantasy I Island. It. I never saw The Love Boat. Let us know in the comments how different those two shows are. <laughs> the plane, because, the plane, boss, no, the plane. No, totally <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Bitches Brew. B Bitches Brew. Oh, I can't, I, I can't get off. Yeah, no, no. Bitches Brew is an incredible record. This is where... Uh, and plus, like, your wife has good advice. That's another thing we learned from this album. Yes. Oh, sorry, go ahead. B Bitches Brew. Uh, basically, this is the <laughs> album where uh, Miles changed the music. He uh, went from acoustic to electric, uh, from uh, uh, standards to uh, free, more freer uh, sound, and uh, uh, basically... Uh, propelled uh, jazz into fusion, basically. And this album cover is done by an artist named Maddie. And Maddie also did a lot of the Santana covers, which is also uh, uh, a project that is very closely aligned 
with our guest, John McKinley. Also goes by one name. Hey, next. McKinley. Let's go. Right? I saw this concert with Stan Switalski, if he's watching tonight. And I, we, I was at the same concert with uh, Richard, Richard Franz. Yeah, Toronto. Yeah, Toronto, Toronto Pantages yeah. wow. Theater. Middle of an afternoon, sunny afternoon. And this cover is amazing because uh, Miles, Miles is, was quite the artist, and uh, he, he created this cover. He uh, drew the cover. Um, and this is later Miles. So this is what some people refer to as more poppy um, style of Miles. But when you really listen to it, uh, especially the live versions of these songs, they really stretch out. And uh, the musicianship uh, on, on these songs are absolutely incredible. And Miles was still playing wonderfully at this time. And this quintessential, the... Gateway drug. This is the gateway drug. It is. It is. You listen to this, you listen to this record once and you will love jazz You're forever. Mm -hmm. You will go off into the tributaries, the, the tributaries, the creeks, the little streams, the uh, swales, and even a few drainage ditches. And you'll discover all sorts of artists uh, related to Miles Davis and listen to jazz for the rest of your life if you listen to this album once. I wanted to branch out a little bit, too, because a lot of people were following Miles at the time all over the world. And uh, when this when this came out and this next album, uh, this is representative of what was happening in in uh, in Prussia at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Rob and I were in a little Prussian jazz chord duet. Um, we had pseudonyms, though. What were the pseudonyms, Sylvia? I didn't bring my glasses <laughs> again, unfortunately. What was my name? I think I have my glasses on. What is it? You? Get it together, <laughs> Sylvia, and just say the name, please. Paul, go and glitter. Paul, go and, Paul, go and glitter. Go and get her. Is that what it said? Yeah, and Rob is... Go and, oh, Rob I, is, I thought it was glitter. Go and get her. <laughs> And Rob is named Jack, Jack Goff. <laughs> Jack Goff. <laughs> the present. <laughs> hey, Jack. Anyway, Jack, let's go to the next record. So that one's that's kind a, of beige. Look at the All right. Kaiser helmets. That's twisted in so many different ways. So many ways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Frank. Right. Frank Zappa. Um, you know, Frank Zappa was uh, uh, very similar to Miles in that. He had several versions of bands that were just just totally uh, amazing and very different from one another. And uh, this was one of his early bands with the original Mother's Invention, and they were spoofing uh, hippies, basically, the San Francisco love scene, and um, uh, Sgt. Pepper's all at the same time. And the, the name of this time. cover is uh, We're Only In It For The Money. And it was put <laughs> together by uh, Zappa's artist, Cal Schenkel, who put together a lot of uh, Frank's uh, album covers. It's, a, it's an incredible record um, and an amazing cover. I, I heard that he, they put that cover out like 24 hours after Sgt. Pepper's came out. <laughs> no they slapped that thing Absolutely. together and got it out. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. Amazing. It is brilliant. Um, Weasel's Rip My Flesh is also the original Mothers. And, uh, you know, what else can you say about uh, this cover? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very soothing. It, it's a quite, a, you can relax by just watching the cover. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tasty, this record's a tasty little sucker. Um, this is another. You wonder what kind of nicotine hell he was in. He, he, <laughs> no, no, nonstop, nonstop chain smoker. Um, this is Burt Weenie Sandwich and uh, another cover put together by uh, Zappa's uh, 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 famous uh, uh, artist, uh, Cal Schenkel. A wonderful uh, little pastiche of bizarre items. Okay. I'll say that. Agree with that. And Frank's probably most famous this record, Hot Rats. And uh, this was filmed very early in the morning in a very drained swimming pool or in, in somewhere in L.A., and uh, this, I can't remember her name, but uh, she was a member of the GTOs, um, uh, which was a, uh, a, a very short-lived uh, girl rock group comprised entirely of uh, uh, L.A. groupies. And anyway, she was climbing out of, this, uh, out of this empty swimming pool as they took the photo. 
And uh, this record is very jazzy, <laughs> almost, almost virtually instrumental, and uh, really, really solidified Frank's uh, uh, cred as an, as an absolutely world-class, wonderful musician and composer. This is, Paul, this is a project that you and I put together. Oh, no. <coughs> yeah, Morocco Mothers. The Morocco Mothers uh, was a spinoff from uh, the Frank Zappa organization. And uh, really, what, what we were trying to feature here is the use of maracas in a, in a kind of vengeful and almost uh, kind of violent way. <laughs> we ended up punching each other a lot with the maracas. <laughs> Maybe, Sylvia, I, Rob and I didn't bring our glasses. Maybe you could read us some of the Popular titles from the record. What, first of all, what's the record called? The record's called uh, <laughs> Shake It, You Mother. Popular hits. Okay, maybe you could read maybe a few of the songs. A few of the songs, sure. Um, I've got all the ringing in my ears and none of my fingers. <laughs> if you don't believe no. I love you, just ask my wife. What? <laughs> oh my God! If the phone doesn't ring, it's it's me. That's excellent. <laughs> That's my if favorite. That that almost made uh, that got to number fourteen. <laughs> okay, okay, you know your on. favorite. No, no, hold on. And, uh, if if my nose is if my nose was running money, I'd blow it all on you. That's very romantic. <laughs> 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 all right. <laughs> the phone doesn't ring. It's me. Ah, John. And this is this is the best record of all. And uh, this is a man who uh, takes the spirit and. Uh, uh, vibe of Miles and the, the talent and, and uh, finesse of, of Frank and has produced an incredible album of originals. This is John McKinley's uh, original, all original record. Okay, couldn't resist, couldn't resist, couldn't resist. <laughs> so I think there's some social, Sylvia. Yeah, we do have a few. Uh, oh, it's still spring. spring. Isn't that great? We just want to make a quick. Maybe can you share the screen. Yeah. Oh, we're not sharing the screen anymore. Oh my. You're God. not. I, I don't even know what's going on anymore in this goddamn show. Okay, now. It's okay, going. we like the likes, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We you know we're simulcast. Remember that we're simulcast on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Twitch, and sometimes Instagram if we could ever figure it out. But, you know, right now on uh, YouTube, we are looking to get a thousand, a thousand, a thousand subscribers. Subscribers. So if you're on YouTube or after the show, you want to go to our YouTube page, which is Water Street Blues Band on YouTube, please hit subscribe <laughs> because it will free Paul from that green square. He's trapped there forever. So if we get you enough subscriptions, we can get him out because he's trapped. He hasn't eaten for weeks. His foot is starting to look very appetizing to himself. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyway, thanks, guys. We love, we love the likes. We like the loves. Thank you so much for uh, joining us and for uh, spotting us on social media every once in a while. We appreciate having you with us. Oh, we ju I just got a message that Facebook um, from Ruth that Facebook kicked some people off. So maybe we can just check and make sure that that stream is still operating. Wow, that's weird. Um, we did have a little internet glitch and the power went out earlier. I'm seeing actually that, uh, I don't know what to tell you. We're all, we're all, let's just double check here if we can restart Facebook. We're still on YouTube if you want to walk over to YouTube. <laughs> Just let your fingers do the walking across the keyboard. Looks like Facebook has dumped us off. That's weird. We really have been. We're online, though. We're over there. We're online so again. It, says, it Facebook? says we're online, but but it must have it must have been interrupted at some point. Maybe we had a little internet glitch. We're live. We're live. We're, live. we're so. From Bears live. Law. Okay. Shall we're we carry so on, or is there some evasive action we can take? <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks like oh, we're there. I can see it. Looks like there's, there. there's a couple good. more people jumping on, so we've okay. got two more back up. Good. So I think uh, I think Facebook must have shut down. We were pretty steady on YouTube. You can jump over to YouTube. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. I don't know. Obviously, if you can hear us, you're already on. 
one of those two for sure. Yeah, Facebook is working fine now. I can see it on my, so okay. we can. Okay, um, well, we're really happy to introduce tonight's guest. And uh, as Paul indicated at the top of the show, um, we've asked John to come back for a, uh, a, second, a second visit because, you know, he was just so interesting. We, we went down so many rabbit holes with him in the first time he appeared on the show that w there's so many things that we didn't get to talk about. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll cover all the topics uh, tonight. John is a uh, singer, he's a songwriter, he's a master musician, he's a master jam master, so if you've ever mm -hmm. attended, or if you're a musician, have played at one of John's uh, jams, you'll know how good, a, he, how good he is at uh, running a jam, which is not an easy thing to do. As Paul indicated, he's a winner of the Mel Brown Award, he's got a hot new record out right now. And uh, we're going to, as Fluffy's about to escort him from the green room to the production studio, we're going to play a little video. All right. See you in the future. Santana, Supernatural Tributo Santana. Woo. Welcome to the show, John. Woo. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, thanks, you, guys. Do, you do things in a big way. Look at that rhythm section. Holy mackerel, you must have spent a million dollars that day on that. Uh, it, was, it was a blast. <laughs> <laughs> it was phenomenal. We're, so tell us about the video. Well, uh, last year, the, the Blue Society, because of the COVID, but thing they couldn't really have the acts come in so they had to have something and they provided a really wonderful thing for the local 
venues and for the local musicians they had us playing at something called true blue and i uh that was one of the venues there at bobby o'brien's they had us play for that and uh it was uh it was it was wonderful because you know we got the big stage and all the monitors and it was fantastic yeah you but, by the way the, those rhythm guys they're actually the one's from guatemala the other's from el salvador and uh they're uh that's their music. They, they're the real authentic thing. I love having those guys with us, you know. Yeah, they were amazing. You were amazing on that 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 guitar, which we'll talk about later. The one that you <laughs> took it to, the one that's from the First World War. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll maybe talk about that later. So, yeah, we, we started the show talking about uh, uh, th three things that actually we've talked about before a couple of times because we, we love those three topics. Uh, space. Space. <laughs> miles. Zappa. They kind of all go together. They're all kind of spacey in the same way. And <laughs> and you're from New Mexico. Tell us, tell us for those for those that uh, for those on the show that uh, don't know your background. Please tell us a little bit about uh, your hometown and uh, and growing up in Roswell and and uh, you know how you got into this. Well, uh, yeah, I'm. I was born in Roswell, New Mexico. I was actually born in the same hospital that John Denver was born in on the very same day he was born 10 years later. Wow. So there's a spacey thing for you. He was, I was born December 31st, 1952. He was born December 31st, 1942. And, I, and it was in St. Mary's Hospital at Roswell, New Mexico. So there you go. You're in, good, you're in great company. <laughs> it was and a good it, hospital. I've turned out a lot of good babies. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but that's that's where that... that uh, spaceship went down you know the alien spacecraft and in 1947 they said and, uh, you know there's a lot of evidence that like rob said that they the is it true are they the pentagon news. i finally owning up fussing up to this yeah the pentagon actually re re uh, released uh, photographic evidence that the uh, air force uh, uh, was able to get i think over the last three or four years and there's several instances of it and they're not saying it's aliens, but they're saying it's unidentified. We don't know what it is. We can't explain it. But here, here's what it looks like. <laughs> Me and Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, like uh, I don't know what, what you guys think about stuff like that. I I believe that that I mean. If you're just a logical being and you look at all the cosmos out there mm -hmm. and you realize that we're like a you know fourth rate planet on a third rate Star. system <laughs> <laughs> out here on the edge of a galaxy we're actually in the edge of the milky way and you look out there and there's billions in the of stones of the milky way and then you, well, you know you just continue on throughout the rest of the universe it's really arrogant for us to think that we're the only ones. It really is. You I, th know. I think our uh, yeah yeah I think our solar <laughs> system is actually a corpuscle in some in some insect's bloodstream that's you know part of this you know, <laughs> massive massive world beyond us. It's possible. Uh, that's why it bugs me so much. <laughs> <laughs> so John, uh, since uh, since you were on the show last time, you know we've been kind of uh, kind of paying attention to uh, Oasis and uh, and your new your new uh, your new band. You're doing some traveling and some touring, and uh, what plans do you guys have? Uh, this is a real. Tell us about the band. It's a really cool horn band. Uh you mean the one from back, from in, back in, in the day? You got you. How did you? How did you wow. find out about that? That's, that's, some, that's some research. That's some research. Well, yeah, that was the first back, Oasis back, band. Back in New Mexico, there was, you know, uh, you had to travel a far distance to get a good gig, right? Yeah, where I lived from, anyway. And uh, I happened to hook up with these guys in Portales, New Mexico. They were all going to the university there. They were all. Um, they had their masters or their bachelors in music and they were horn players and they they loved miles davis they're the ones that turned me on to miles davis yeah. by the way and uh and actually frank zappa too but uh we put together this horn band at the time it was all the funky stuff that was happening uh you know tower of power war uh stevie wonder uh, of course you know chicago and that's what here so we took off on a tour and we went out towards texas with that band we, we played all over texas and out into louisiana and uh that kind of thing we got to play for bob hope wow uh, very cool because they needed 
he used to do these these things for now don't get upset it was called the retarded children's fund that's what it was named and in those yeah, days yeah. you could say that word <laughs> and he, he he came in and did the show and he had to have somebody that could read charts so that was our band they didn't know that i couldn't read them but it's okay i had the <laughs> piano player sitting next to me going now <laughs> now now <laughs> <laughs> I can read the chord charts. I just didn't know when they were happening, right? <laughs> now. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you know, you were, you were, I was thinking about um, when, you were, when we were watching you over, uh, when we were watching you in that show at the beginning of, of this segment, I was thinking about, uh, uh, I was thinking about, I was remembering us, because down the street from where you played that show is a place called The Lou, and we were playing in the bass. We, 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 we were doing these gigs where we, we were there, but we weren't allowed to be heard because there was no. The owner didn't have permission for a band to play, so we'd be playing, and you'd be coming out from the kitchen and telling the audience to be quieter, not clap, stuff like that. And I heard, I heard you've had the opposite experience where you've been told to turn up. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we we went into this. We got a, we got a, a tour through Texas and. Uh, you know, we're in a seven-piece horn band, and we're going. To, we come into this place called Colleen, Texas. It's a little town that's there only because the, there's a uh, an army base there, yeah. and uh, it's for all the GIs to go off and drink and have fun. And it's a tough town. It's like you know, pun shops and you know, yeah. pl things like that. And this bar that we went into, as soon as you walked in, it smelled like you wouldn't believe. But <laughs> it was it was like the kind that you might see in that movie Roadhouse, where they threw I mean, it's just yeah, tough. Yeah. And so we get up there, and we're playing all our little slick, you know, horns stuff. And uh, the band before us was like, I mean, they had stacks of marshals, and they were playing really loud, you know. <laughs> so we're, we, we're, and we're, we got horns, and the, the guy walked up to us on the, on the set at the break and said, hey, listen, can you guys turn up? <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> okay. So we, that's the first time I've ever been asked to turn up. But I mean, they, they, were, they were used to really uh, much harder music. And in fact, that night, a band came in, another band from somewhere, uh, walk, came in and these guys had really long hair and, you know, they walked up to us and they said, uh, hey man, we just, our gig fell through, can we, can we jam on your break? And we said, sure, we, we let them get up there. And the first thing the guy did is he went and went like that and it was like, mm. and, a, and then of course the place came alive and it was like, yeah, that's what they wanted, you know, we wow. just didn't. We weren't yeah. that kind of band. <laughs> okay, so since we're talking about music, John, uh, I can't wait to hear you play. Could you? Could you? Could you do a number for us? Uh, I'd love to. Uh, yeah, great, John McKinley, everybody. <laughs> you been gone I had time to myself haven't even tried to find somebody else when you told me you were leaving almost came as good news yeah oh it may sound funny but it's true I'm better off with you Now I must admit that I miss you sometimes Now the day goes by that you don't cross my mind At the same time, I think of all the hell you put me through Oh babe, yeah it's the lesser of two evils Think I'm better off with the blue Thank you. 
I know someday I'll wake up and these blues will be gone. I'll forget about you and how everything went wrong. But if you had a stayed, I'd be dead in my tracks. Cause I still love you, baby, but I don't want you back, no. Tonight I'm gonna go down to the bad side of town. Hear him play the blues when the sun go down. I know just what to say when someone asks about you. I tell him, yeah, we had our good times. But I think I'm better off with the blues. If I had to choose. I'm better off with the Thank you. Thank you, John. Ah. You guys are great. Can I say something about you guys? (laughs) Sure. If it's sure. Uh, No. Uh. Listen, this thing that you do, this this whole this whole Talking about live, you know, connecting people at a time when we really need to do that. Keeping music in front of everybody at a time when we really need to do that. Uh, uh, having humor <laughs> when things are kind of dull and 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 what, what, hard to what confront. What do you mean about there, humor? You know, giving people an alternative. That's the kind of thing that I liked about Frank Zappa and Miles Davis is they gave people an alternative. They, you know, it didn't have to be the same old stuff. It, it could be very uh, original and out there. And anyway, you guys are doing a fantastic job. I just thank want you, to John. compliment yeah, yeah. you for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And uh, we, we... thanks to all the people that are watching the show. And I, I think a lot of our, a lot of our guests, uh, a lot of our audience is because of our guests. And we've had, we've been very fortunate to have people like you on this show. So. Thanks. So, John, you, you, you brought up Miles. You know, um, how did how did how did you first, you know, hook into Miles? You know, how did how did how did that sort of enter your consciousness? Well, this these guys were the the horn players in the band. They were telling me about stuff. Uh, you know, because it okay when you cross Texas, like you got to remember in these days there was no cell phones or nothing, so. You know, you're on a bus. If you weren't reading, you know, you were going like for seven hours to the next gig. You know, I mean, Texas is huge. Right. You know, it takes forever to get across it. So uh, these guys were—they were basically uh, captive. <laughs> and I would be asking them, okay, so why is it A flat and not G sharp and and stuff like this? Because you know, I did, you know. And they go, John, why don't you just go to school and learn this stuff? <laughs> anyway, so they started saying, listen, you need to listen to some stuff. And they started showing me about this, this these thing called the modes, right? And it didn't make sense to me because it's just, it's just the, the major scale. And then starting on the next note of the major scale. And I thought, so what's the big deal? And he says, listen to this album. It's called Kind of Blue. You guys had it up there. And I listened to it and I went like, whoa. He says, he said, that's the modes. And I went, okay, I got to listen. I got to learn here. So that's how I got into it. You know. Very cool. Now, <laughs> now, now um, has has Miles influenced the way you approach, you know, the way you play your music? Uh, has has it had any impact on on how you you know approach music in your life? Well, totally. Because um, what I like about him is that. You know, people say he was kind of rude at times and all that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but he, he he was, you know, he was a true artist. He was really an artist. Like, his art took the forefront in his mind. And so he didn't let uh, stupid interviewers come on and... and, and when, he, when he knew they were saying certain things, that, that, that he would give them answers that didn't make sense. And uh, it, it came off as being rude, but he was just being very artistic. He was just sticking to his guns. And so if there's one thing I've, I've gotten from him is like, do what you want to do, do what you feel good about doing, and don't worry about what anybody else thinks about it. That's what I got from what he does. Well, the, and yeah, he's, you know, he, was, he traveled his own pathway, 
and, and no one was going to tell him which direction that would be <laughs> other than him. Yeah, and, and another thing is, I like blues, okay? And, and he likes blues. Like he says, he uses, he talks about blues through the whole, even though he was considered this jazz musician, he talks about blues. He wrote many songs that were just the blues. And in fact, he'll, in his book, it says, yeah, I wrote this song. It's called Four. It's just the blues. <laughs> Here's another one in B flat. It's a blues. In fact, when he auditions bass players, the very first thing he tell them, he say, "Play me a B flat blues." And if they couldn't just on their own play a B flat blues, he didn't go. The, that was the end of the. <laughs> that was the end of the of the audition. You know. So uh, when he did the the album sketches of Spain, he said flamenco is basically Spanish blues. So I I like that. That's a real. He made he 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 paid homage to the cornerstone of what what's all that music is built on. You know? Yeah, and, and and he had such open ears because you know he took the blues and he could hear the blues in in very traditional Spanish music. Oh yeah. Um. It, go ahead. I mean, if you listen to some of the stuff he does, it's 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 he's not fast. He's not like remember that guy called Doc Severinsen that used to be oh, on yeah. the Tonight Show, yeah. like. Like that guy was like super speedy and like you know and that's okay he was he was technically really good Miles, but Miles is really slow no vibrato just but he just played the right notes you know he sure did and lots of it was very much like a blues or blues singer or a blues musician and, you know? and he created a lot of space in his music it was the notes that he didn't play that were sort of almost as important as the ones he did yeah so yeah. Which, which brings me to Frank Zappa who was a very different musician. And, 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 you know, you, you love Zappa's music. I love Zappa's music. And Sylvia is especially big fan of Frank Zappa. <laughs> <laughs> Did we have a winner for the blues <laughs> quiz yet? Uh, not, not, not yet. Um, but the, uh, 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 so what, has Frank had an influence on the way you approach your playing and, and the way you approach music? Uh, oh, I would, I would say so. Yeah. Um, he, I did. I don't mind mashing things up that are of different genres, and he used to do that all the time, you know. And plus, you know, guys, you, you've probably run into it. You can, you can get into this sort of uh, snobbishness of, about music, yeah. you know. I mean, it used to be in the older days, like when Miles was talking about, it used to be the classical people looked down on jazz and that type of thing. But it, it exists, exists everywhere. I mean, I've had, I've had guys that were playing more recent music uh, alternative or punk or something like that look back at classic rock and kind of put their noses up at it and and i don't i'm against that kind of thing like all music is good and that's one thing i got from frank you know he hired that guy named george duke oh yeah you know the really great yeah. piano player and 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 uh for the very first rehearsal george duke said he was he had him playing this <laughs> Just one four like that, that 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 you know. And after about ten minutes on this, he says to Frank, uh, "Frank, I can't do this." And Frank says, what, "What's the matter? Did you hurt your hand or something?" He says, "No, I, I like I, I just I just can't do this." And he goes, "Well, it's not hard. Let me show you." And Frank started playing on it. And he goes, "He says, no, it's just like." And Frank says, "Oh, it's beneath you. I get it." <laughs> and then he says, wow. <laughs> "He says." Uh, what he learned from Frank is that a lot of the ideas he had, foolish, stupid, ridiculous ideas about music, Frank blew those all away and, and showed him that it's all good and everything fits with everything else and, you know, it's all a piece of the whole pie, right? So if I got anything from Frank, I know that was a long-winded <laughs> answer, but... That's a great I, I'm, I'm open to everything. I'm open, I like, I think, every kind of music is good. And in fact, I love that I have two young sons that bring me stuff all the time. They say, have you heard this? And they'll play me something or they'll show me something. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't even know some of the other music that was going on. And, I, and, and they're, I, very, they're, they're very talented uh, guys, both of them. Oh, well, thank incredible, you. Yeah, thank incredible you. band. So, so, John, we, we've talked about your, your World War I guitar that you've got, your, your <laughs> beautiful gold top. Um, <laughs> that's been through, that, you know, you've had that for how long? 
Uh, it's I've I've had it since 1970. It's it's uh, it's over 50 years old. It, it's a 69 Gibson Deluxe Les Paul, wow. and uh, I got it in in this little shop, the only music store that was there in Roswell, New Mexico, and uh, it was the only one they had. I saw these bands, this band called Baby from Dallas, Texas, had two of them. And I went in and I said, have you got a Les Paul? And they didn't even have it out in the front. I mean, it wasn't a crazy. It'd be three or four years after that. Yeah, right. Uh, and the guy went back and pulled out this dusky old case and opened it up. There it was. Hey, all right. So uh, it's just had a lot of road, this one. <laughs> How did it look when you got it? Like, was it, in it was good... gold. <laughs> it yeah, was, actually, it was gold. actually gold. I've seen that guitar live many times. And when you put your arm over it, I wonder if it's... I always wondered... Was it green originally? Because it's actually kind of, it just got yeah. every, it's, it's got been, every color. look at that thing. It's, it's got that, yeah. uh, that's actually the primer underneath it. Wow. Yeah. What, what happened is we were playing a gig in, uh, Ma, in Brownsville, Texas. Okay, Brownsville, Texas is the southernmost point of the United States. It's, it's further south than the Florida Keys. There's palm trees in Brownsville, Texas, okay? And that was in December. The next gig was in, in Aspen, Colorado, in the mountains, in in December, where they're over Christmas and New Year's, and I, I had this in the truck, and I didn't take it out the first night we got there. We were so tired, and I brought it in the next day. We're in this cabin with the place going all that, and I opened the case, and because it was cold, it cracked just right in front mm. of my eyes, just cracked, and then it's just started losing its skin ever since, and so. You know that's why that's why it's the way it is. Well, it's your it's guitar, legend. man. It's like it's it's your signature guitar. No one no one else can that. mistake that guitar. You can you can see it a mile away. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you. It's thank you. So would you you want to want to throw another tune at us on that beautiful gold top? Sure, I, I'd like to. Uh, let me do. Uh, you got a little backing track on this one for me. Just gonna do a little instrumental blues, okay? Cool. All right. I like about this guitar uh so yeah i don't want you to to go put go put the rabbit hole thing me going down the rabbit hole this is really I geeky won't. stuff you know guitar Do players it. are geeky as anybody can be <laughs> and uh but the les paul was it actually les paul got divorced with his wife in the early 60s and that's when they start making les pauls because he didn't want her to get any of the money that he was making on that. So he had this deal with Gibson and they stopped making Les Pauls and they, they had to create a new guitar. It was called the SG. You guys know what the SG yeah. is? That was because there was no Les Pauls made. So that from like 1963 or something like that, there was no Les Pauls. And then in 68, I guess divorce was over, they came out with the first Les Pauls. So by that time, all the, all the rock guys had figured out that Les Paul sounded pretty good, okay? It was a jazz guitar before that. So they went out, and they're all buying these older ones with the really fat, wide pickups that sound like, you know, like what you hear on, the, on those heavy songs. 
so when they finally came out in 68 with a new Les Paul, they had these little bitty pickups, and they and they it was it was a single coil pickup, which is called a P90. Anyway, they sounded thin. They didn't sound like what the guys were used to hearing. So everybody, the, the public kind of went, eh, you know. And so to save themselves, the next year, 69, which is this one, they went. They all, they also owned a place called Epiphone, and, and Epiphone had these smaller pickups. So they put the small pickups in the bodies that had already been made for the other one, and that's why this is this is called Deluxe. It's the very first new Les Paul, actually, new model. And they had to do that kind of save themselves. And then only a few guys got it because it didn't last long. They only went till about 74, and then they stopped making them, I think. But I happened to get one of the first ones, and Especially I didn't know I was getting it. I just it just was a Les Paul. So it's got a really nice, you know, it's, it's a brighter sound than the other Les Pauls. They're kind of bassy, you know. Anyway, yeah, and then and then job. you know Jimmy Page and all those guys started playing them, and then they just blew up again as a as a brand. People oh. people just wanted yeah. everyone wanted a Les Paul. Yeah, well. It, you know, I don't know if you remember, well, you guys aren't as old as I am, but, like, there was no, you couldn't find out who, what guys played unless they, they they posed on the record with them. And you take a look at the first, well, any Led Zeppelin album, they're not posed with their instruments. So no. when we saw Led Zeppelin in 1973, and Jimmy Page walked out on stage and they gave him a Les Paul, that's the first time we knew he played a Les Paul, because there's... There was no magazines or internet or nothing, There was no media. No media. You know? Yeah. yeah. No media. Nobody knew what was going on. No, we had no idea. But that's also why the music was so incredibly important. Like, it was just all about the music. It oh, yeah. wasn't about, it wasn't about you know, the, the image as much as it was about the music. It was just all about, it was, that's all it was about. Totally. You would, you, would, you would stare at the albums hoping you could get more out of it. Like, I've exactly. read everything on it. I've read the words. I know who produced it. Uh, it was manufactured in Ontario. Uh, right. but, yeah. uh, Taking you know, the streetcar home from San You just tried to man. get whatever you could because it was <laughs> yeah. not much, you know. Couldn't, get, couldn't wait to get to the record, to my record player on the streetcar from Sam the Record Man, sitting there just imagining how amazing it's going to be. And you go home and you go, this kind of amazing experience. And everybody's oh, like, yeah. turn it down. Turn it down now. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, you've so, inspired. Uh, Sorry? I was, uh, Sylvia, yeah. I had to look up the word misogynist okay. after our, we talked the other day. <laughs> you know who I was Because we, we mentioned, uh, I think you mentioned, you, you, we're talking about Frank and you said that. And now I realize why you said that. <laughs> Do you? Uh, well, in, 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 de, in defense of Frank. Yes. He, he he didn't just single out women. Like yeah. probably the the Jewish people thought he was anti-Semitic, and probably the you know the uh, Catholic. I mean, he made fun of everybody: the hippies, yeah. uh, the political people. Uh, like he, he like I don't think he liked He was he was, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he seemed satirist. like he seemed uh, he seemed like a, a chauvinist in those days. I think. Oh, he probably was. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't take uh, away I, from I think, his talent. <laughs> the re the reason he pointed that stuff out is he pointed all the stuff out that that was was stupid about what people did. He was also he was also a great guy. Like he, guy, people would walk up to him and say, uh, "Man, I, I'd love to audition for your band." He said, "Well, come by and audition." You know, most big bands wouldn't do that. You know, wouldn't say, "Oh, come on out." You just meeting the guy on the street. A lot of the guys he got were people he met on the street, like Ruth Underwood, the 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 vibe player or the vibe in the. Yeah. yeah, and he had, well, and he, she, it, he was not the most, um, he wasn't probably the easiest band leader to work for. But the people, oh, no, he, wasn't. he was very demanding I, 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 of himself, I heard of himself and everyone else too, from what I understand. <laughs> yeah, uh, you should you should check out some of the auditions. Steve Vai, you know, the really incredible yeah, guitar yeah. player, he said he he gave him the, the hardest one. He said, uh, okay, play this. Stevie played it. He said, "Okay, now play that in a minor key." Okay, yeah. Now go up, go up a a, a major third on that. Okay, now we can now do it in a reggae. Okay, now do it in swing, and then and then give him all these and make it diminish. Yeah. And and then he finally says something, and then, and then Steve said, 
uh, I can't do that. And then he, he looked at me and said, well, I heard Lyndon Ronstadt's looking for a guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't he, and what, like, didn't he also like, and, and then, give him all this music to learn and then he showed up having like worked so hard to conquer it all and he showed up and then he said now nah, we're not doing that music <laughs> yeah he, he he was he was but anyway he hired he, him. Yeah, he did he hired him and he was complicated i mean there's no doubt that frank was a complicated yeah. taskmaster but you know the people who talk about being in his bands the people who are alive today who are in his bands loved him they loved being in the band they loved his music they loved what he was doing they loved their time there he was tough and uh he he rehearsed bands they had to know like 140 songs and he could call any so any of those songs at a moment's notice and they would have to sort of be on it you're a lot nicer about it though rob yeah. we have to learn 140 <laughs> songs for rob but he's a lot nicer about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so John, uh, you've got an album out, and uh, I think we've got a we've. Uh, oh yes, we've got to make sure that everyone can. So it's window get a on good luck. Window on the world by uh, John McKinley, and if people want to grab that record, uh, where's the best place for them to get it, John? Well, you can get it uh, at, at uh, www.johnmckinleyband.com. That's my website. And it's also on uh, iTunes, but I'd rather you get it from my uh, website because uh, iTunes doesn't fess up on the money very, no, very no, good. No, it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, uh, no. <laughs> or you can get it from any, uh, any of the McKinley boys. I think we all have some still. There's a few left hanging around. <laughs> so what, what do you have, you know. what do you have uh, planned uh, coming up uh, for this summer as things get, a, things get a little better and we see some light at the end of the tunnel for live music? Well, I think, I think they're going to do something again. The Blues uh, Festival people, you know, the Blues Society, uh, they, uh, they've asked me to do a, uh, a jam that's going to be put together for some of the blues camp alumni, you know, the, oh, the kids that went to yep. the blues camp, they've got, we're going to ask some of them, it's, it's not going to be an open jam, but we're going to ask some of, some of the ones that have come before to come out and jam, and we're going to, it's going to be on stage somewhere, uh, and that's going to happen in August, and then uh, they've also asked the, my Santana band, the Su Supernatural, to play for, uh, for uh, a venue, we're going to be at, uh, is that Belmont Village? We're going to be playing there. Oh, that's very cool. That's a July. Nice outdoor stage. Yeah, it's yeah. A beautiful yeah. outdoor stage. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. And 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 as soon as as soon as we get a chance to get together again, uh, the 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 jazz room, the the Hughes Hotel, the Atlas family, they're still willing to. We've never tore our gear down. It's so still, it's still out there. there. Is it? Oh yeah. So if they, <laughs> if, if, I mean, we're ready to fire her back up and get the jam. Well, going and we can, uh, you know? and you know, we're going to um, obviously we're going to leave this video up, and you can people can see it again, and and uh, as as things opened up, um, if anyone hasn't experienced uh, one of your jams, uh, John, they're missing a huge treat. Whether they participate or not, you are literally the master of jam masters and it, you just make everyone feel so welcome and it's 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 just amazing you bring out the best in in all the musicians who come so it, it's really you don't want to miss it as the jazz room starts things up again when things are safe and and we're all you know been uh had all been jabbed <laughs> A couple of times <laughs> yeah, it's yeah get the jab <laughs> it's all it's all gonna be it's all gonna be um it's all going to be coming up, I think, as the months roll on. So, yeah, that's an, that's an opportunity for sure. Um, John, we really want to thank you for being on the show tonight. It's your, your, you're wonderful to talk to. Again, we ran out of time. We had like no lots, of, lots of other things we wanted to talk to you about, but we just, we'll just have to have you back again. <laughs> we have some vintage photos and everything. <laughs> well, as long, long, I'll come back as long as I can hang, hang with Fluffy again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well we, we, were, we, were tra we were trading licks in the back room. Yeah, there. There, he's there. He's there's there. He's 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 there. there. He's there. John, your your lawyers um, negotiated a very difficult rider. We 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 had a very tough time. Um, uh, 
uh, fulfilling the rider. Paul, you know, why don't... Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, let's get the rider up, because this one was really tough, and we haven't actually come to an agreement yet on this, but um, uh, there's still some faxing going on back and forth. So I'm just going to share what the offer is, and John can decide if he wants it or not. Let's go to what John wanted on a contractual level. Next slide, please. So, John, you asked for um, one of those space vacations um, and uh, in orbit um, because of your background and your connection with, uh, with space itself. $235 um, million. And we priced the damn thing <laughs> at $235 million per night. Uh, I can't see what the rest of it says, Sylvia. Oh, my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> this is including a continental breakfast, so that's not a bad. Deal. Right? Yeah, that was quick. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So, well, I mean, it's still expensive, John. So we've we've cut, uh, we went and did some scouting. We've come up with an alternative vacation package for you. COVID nineteen's driven everybody nuts. You need to get away. <laughs> So at your first opportunity, uh, we're going to go back to Breslau again. And Breslau keeps coming up because Breslau, for me, is the epicenter of everything. Sure, that's where you're right. And, uh, happened yeah. So instead, we have uh, made special arrangements in Breslau. And Breslau is home of what, Canada's, Sylvia? Come on. Canada's first coin-operated toilet. <laughs> yes, I looked that up. <laughs> and that's where they all started. So let's let's show you the package here. Oh so first God. of all, you'll be staying at the new Hangover Hotel okay. in Breslau. Okay. Um, uh, it's and we've got the mini suite. It sleeps twelve. Um, there's running water. Uh, all you can eat uh, Benedict spaghetti, eggs Benedict spaghetti <laughs> for breakfast. You don't have to pay the seven ninety nine. <laughs> Homemade pizza. Right. With mystery discs, we don't know what the white discs what are it yet. Comes with um, seven ninety-nine. And this one, uh, a kind of meat stuff with white liquidy fluid on the side, again for seven ninety-nine. But this is a large portion, John. Two can dine for seven ninety-nine on this one. Oh my God. Next, Rob. What are you? Uh, okay, and here we go. These are the ruins of the uh, of of the of the toilet museum. <laughs> Um, which which Rob, Rob Rob photographed the other day. I actually went out there. That's a historic picture. It was also the Purina Ketchow factory for a little while back at the turn of the century. Next one. Uh, you'll get to see the Pay Toilet Museum, and you can actually use it. It's the only one still in operation in Breslau, um, in, in in Canada, oh in Breslau. Yep. Oh, two two. Uh, Breslau. Breslau Convenience, you have that available to you from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. by what? appointment, John, and you can go through me for that appointment. I'll make the connection. <laughs> Rob, why don't you tell us about this one? This is one of your finds. Uh, yeah, this th this is right beside uh, Breslau Convenience. It's, uh, it's a specialty Cuban store. It has Cuban stuff, caps, and hats, and it's also, you can fax. So, you know, because faxing is, is, is today's way of communicating. All, all the people are doing it. Everybody's doing it. That's John, and let's say you need to talk to Darius, okay? You, and you're really in a rush. You can go right across. It's only about three blocks away. You can send him a fax, say you're having a great time. Great, great vacation. Come and visit me. Awesome. Just, just, awesome. Just, is right. Just, Goddamn right. Just, John, you've been great. Thank you so much. Uh, Fluffy's going to escort you to the green room where he will prepare your shower and bath <laughs> and uh and uh it's been great man you're you're always you're the best john uh, well, uh thank you so much thank you guys really had a great time thank you thanks, thanks for being on the thanks. show again thank keep you. smiling yeah. <laughs> yeah you too john take care <laughs> Bye -bye. okay why don't we do some music now oh my Yeah, why don't you guys do one song, and then we'll call it a night. Okay, that's... Uh... Wow, that was great. Hopefully John sticks around for our wild party after that. <laughs> well, we're going to do, uh, do a Jimmy Reed tune um, with a little bit of uh, Aretha. Right, Sylvia? <laughs> and Bob Margolin. Bob Margolin. And who's the other girl you were listening oh, to? yeah, so... Eastern yeah, Bob Europe. Margolin uh, with uh, playing in Russia. That's right. I have to remember her name. Gravica? And it's called Honest I Do. Don't 
don't you know that I love you? Honest, I do. I'll never play anyone above you. Please tell me you love me. I told you I love you Stop driving me mad When I woke up this morning Never felt so Don't you know that I love you? Honest, I do. Oh, I'll never play. No one above you. A little, a little Very Jimmy nice. Reed, still a, Very still a work in progress. Great singing, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful duet, great duet. We got to play that on stage soon. Yeah, we do. Well, it's been a, it's been a, a great show, and we've gone over time, and uh, uh, it's been great to see everybody. We enjoy it as much as, uh, as much as anybody, and we thank you for joining us tonight, Thanks for joining Sylvia. Us, everybody. And well, we're really thrilled that next week we're going to have a bit of a different show and ooh. a different kind of guest, a uh, very musical guest. And our guest next week will be Mark Logan, the proprietor of Encore Records in lovely downtown Kitchener. Mark is a uh, long st- longtime independent record store owner. And they record stores are just the hub and the lifeblood still of live music scenes in the communities in which they exist. And Mark's not only a record store proprietor, he is a label owner. So he's got a number of sure. very cool artists Busted on his... Busted Flat Records. That's right, on his label. And so we're going to have Mark uh, by, and uh, he's going to be talking records, talking music, talking labels, and uh, we'll have a blast. All right. So, yeah, we might even spin a couple of tracks. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Oh, that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Good great idea. idea. Yeah, maybe we should ask mm-hmm. him if there's been a couple of tracks. He got a couple of unique tracks. Maybe some stuff. Maybe some of our stuff. Yeah. <laughs> maybe he could play some of stuff our stuff that we haven't written yet. Think about it, Mark. Prepare. <laughs>
Well, folks, uh, it's, uh, I think it's time for us to pack up. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming by. Thanks to John. As our John, special thanks guest. Thanks, everybody. Where, is it time to pack up? It's time to pack up. All right, all right. Yeah. We've gone over time. Did the hockey game? It's 17 nothing for Winnipeg. Coffee. We're the Water Street Blues Band, and this has been Talking About Live, coming at you every Wednesday at 9 p.m., 8 o'clock in Central Time in Winnipeg. And I think, uh, are we in the same time zone as Montreal? Not sure. I think so. Yeah, could be. Um, join us next week when our guest will be Mark Logan, proprietor and owner of Encore Records in lovely downtown Kitchener. We'll have a lot of fun talking music and listening to tunes. So uh, see you next week, next Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Stay safe. Stay well. Mm -hmm.